All right, you guys, it is Sunday afternoon. It is already two o'clock, so I'm getting a little bit of a later start than I originally planned, but this is my list for meal prep. I might have to do some of this tomorrow, but we'll see. I've got a few things that need to be done today just to set our week up for success, but like I said, we'll see how much I can get done with. So let's go ahead and get started on our meal prep. All right, so jumping right in, if you watched my grocery haul, which should have been the last video that I posted on Monday, I'm hoping this is going out Wednesday, <laughs> but I just never know, okay? Things come up all the time, so hopefully it is a Wednesday, but I am meal prepping just for success for Mark and I and getting a few things ready for the kids as well. It just helps our weeks go by a little more smoothly, and who knows, I think I might do we're gonna have different meals for the next um few weeks eight eight weeks or so and i might do a meal prep each week if you guys are enjoying this one or, or liking that kind of video so first up i am making sure we've got lunches a couple lunches ready for this week and right now i've got my skillet on medium high and i've got about 40 ounces they were each 10 ounce packages of ground beef I did season them, I don't measure, but I did season them with a little garlic and onion powder. And I'm going to be making some taco bowls. So that's what I'm doing first. Like I said, I wanna make sure our lunches are taken care of because Mark and I are participating in a program over the next several weeks and we've got specific meals and foods that we need to be eating, so like I said, or you know, like I've mentioned, setting yourself up for success by, by meal prepping or food prepping, just getting some easy foods ready, not necessarily full-blown meals, definitely helps out if you've got you know a couple hours to spare in your kitchen to do that. So I am going to go ahead and get our lunches ready. That way we're not eating on the fly and we're getting our, you know, the nutrients that we need in our bodies for this program. So I'm gonna go ahead and brown this ground beef up with the onion and garlic powder, and then we're gonna add a little taco seasoning as well and let that simmer for a bit. Okay, instead of me showing like one off, doing one thing at a time, I am gonna bring you guys along with me as I meal prep. So since that ground beef is going to take a little bit, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get some hard boiled eggs going. I love to use my Instant Pot for that just because it's sitting here, not utilizing my stove, and I can use my stove for other things, especially when I'm meal prepping and you know I have a little bit on my list. So I've got my Instant Pot here, got my trivet in the bottom so the eggs don't touch. I've gotta get some water in there. That's how the Instant Pot works. So I have a little over a cup of water and then I'm just making these for the kids So I think I'm gonna do a total of nine. That's three for each of them They love just a snack on hard-boiled eggs. So I'm gonna go ahead and get nine eggs in my pot All right, I've got them in there closing the lid making sure it is sealing. Oh, I have not plugged it in yet Let me get that in there okay and then i like to cook them for four minutes so i'm just going to do high pressure but i am going to go down to four minutes and then i do the four 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 method i've shared this tons of times i bet this hard-boiled eggs is probably in 95 percent of my meal prep videos here on youtube because it's just something easy the kids enjoy them so i'm gonna first this the pot has to come to pressure it's going to cook for four minutes and then after um, the cook time is up. I'm gonna let them sit here in the pot. I'm gonna leave it, you know, pressurized. I'm not gonna release the pressure, but I'm gonna let them sit for four minutes. Okay, ground beef is done cooking. I'm gonna turn my heat down to medium low. Eggs are still going in the instant pot, um, but this ground beef that I'm using is a little bit more fatty than I typically use, so you can see all the juice here. So I'm gonna use, I've seen this hack, I, I've used this hack a few times, but normally I don't need to drain my meat or anything because I buy less fatty meat, but I didn't wanna buy more than I needed, so I'm utilizing what I've got. Um, so if you use a paper towel and a little, um, I use tongs, but I mean, tongs seem to work the best. So I'm just gonna use this to press in here and kind of soak up the extra fat here, all this liquid, and that way I don't have to drain my beef using my strainer or anything. I might have to get another paper towel because this is really, really liquidy. I wanna keep some of this because that's where you know a lot of the flavor is also, but this much is just a little too much. 
Okay, I soaked up the majority of it. There's only a tiny little bit left in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and get some taco seasoning in here. And since this is 40 ounces, I'm going in with a third cup of taco seasoning. I mean, really, you can use however much you want. And I'm just gonna stir this up, get the seasoning over all of my meat. I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn my heat down all the way to low, and that way it's just simmering, just to get the flavors all mixed in here. All right, it is all mixed in, and I'm just gonna let it simmer until my eggs are done. They only have about two minutes left, well, for the cook time, and then, like I mentioned, I'm gonna let it do a little slow release for another four minutes, but I'm just gonna heat this up for two minutes, and then I'll turn off the heat, set this to the side, while I get the rest of my taco salad items prepped, and I'm ready to add the meat on. Okay, moving right along, I've got my setup over here. Uh, don't mind these really <laughs> gross looking bananas. They were in the freezer, so I'm letting them soften so I can make some banana muffins for the kids. But anyway, right now, waiting on the eggs to do their slow release. So I've got some romaine lettuce here, and just one at a time. I am rinsing them off in the sink, so I've already rinsed this one off. I can't. I think you guys can tell that it's kind of wet here. So I'm gonna chop this up and then I am not quite sure how much six ounces is. So I've got my food scale here. This is definitely something new to me. I've never used this before to portion out foods, but I am gonna go ahead and see how much six ounces is because that's how much romaine lettuce is gonna go into each of the taco salad bowls that I'm prepping. Four minutes is done. Oh, I waited a little too long, <laughs> but I've been shooing animals out of the kitchen. So I'm gonna let the rest of the pressure release. All right, the little pin here is down, so that means it is safe to open my pot. Oh, one of my eggs. I thought that might happen. It had a little crack in it when I pulled it out of the carton, so I thought that might happen. And of course, it's so hot that my camera's fogging up, but we'll see if that one's still good to eat or not. This last time I bought eggs, almost the entire bottom, there is a good, well, not the entire, I exaggerate. There is like five eggs on the bottom that were cracked, so it got smushed somewhere. But I'm gonna go ahead and get my eggs out, and I just use tongs because they are pretty warm, and I'm gonna let them sit in this ice bath for another four minutes. So I just got some ice in a bowl, filled it up with water, and I'm gonna let these eggs sit in here for four minutes. And then we will peel them, and they'll be ready for the kids to munch on this week. So I've got two bowls of six ounces, Set aside. So about one heart is six ounces because I've already used two and I've got two bowls here, but my eggs are done. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these peeled. Eggs done for the kids. Only two of them had little cracks, so they don't, they don't look perfect, but they're still edible. The other ones, I mean, the Instant Pot does a great job. That's why I like use, using it. It makes it just super easy to just, you know, you don't have to mess with it. You still got access to your stove top and they peel really easily. So I'm gonna get these in the fridge and that's one thing I can cross off my list. Okay, I've got my five salads or the romaine lettuce portioned out. Mark and I are having taco salads two days this week, so four of them are for us. And then Pearl said she would like to have a taco salad for lunch one day as well. Now I'm going to measure out my ground beef. I'll have all, everything that I'm meal prepping, I'll have either a video link or the recipe um, in the description box in case you guys want to make them for yourself, but I'm just gonna measure out five ounces of ground beef into each of our salads. I might need bigger bowls. I didn't realize how much this was gonna be. I'll have to check and see what kind of bowls I have for this. So I'm also going to be making some tuna salad, and that's obviously not gonna be this much. I might have to transfer these after the fact because I still have more to add into these salads. Now I'm adding in just a little bit of shredded cheese to each of them. And next up, I'm adding these tortilla strips, about 15 grams. These smell good. You actually get more of these than you do cheese. Okay, sorry, I forgot to turn the camera on. I've got Mark in here, because I told him he's got to taste test this, because I'm a little scared of this. I don't like super spicy stuff. <laughs> so he's gonna taste test it, but I've got Greek yogurt, a splash of the Taco Bell sauce, and then just a little bit of taco seasoning in here. And this is going to be our dressing. I did not measure it. The recipe I'm following doesn't give measurements. I'm sure I could Google it, but I didn't feel like doing that. We're just gonna 
make it our own. You can do the same. Just, you know, whip it up to your taste desire. Okay, five taco salads ready for the fridge. I've got one for Pearl. Like I said, she wanted it one day for lunch this week, so I went ahead and prepped hers. I've got my two and then two for Mark to take to work. The last thing that we are going to add to these is a little bit of avocado, but I will like cut them up and add them to Mark's the morning of just so they don't turn brown. Same with Pearl's. I'll put hers in here in the morning so she can take it to school, and then mine, I'll just cut mine up when I'm ready to eat eat my avocado or eat my lunch. I'll have the avocado mixed in there, but all right, that's one or two lunches for Mark and I for this week and then one for Pearl. So I've gone ahead and crossed off hard boiled eggs, got that done, same with the five taco salads. And then I was about to cut up the cucumber real quick, but I forgot that I did not buy a regular cucumber for this week. I bought these mini ones, this is what Pearl asked for, the mini ones, so I don't cut these up. She likes to eat these like they are, same with the other kids. Um, and then sometimes she does this hack. I have to, I'll have to ask her to show me when she does it next time, but she found this hack where she, it's a certain way of cutting it where it turns it into like a little slinky. So she loves to do that and put it in her lunch box. It's the coolest thing. So I do not have to do that because these uh, mini cukes are what we're using. Okay, we're closing in on dinner time for the doggies and the cats, all the animals. <laughs> so I'm not gonna film this part. I'll just show you guys what I'm making, but I have shared this so many times. This is the banana bread recipe that I've been making for years. I've tweaked it a little bit. There's, there's a ton out there, different recipes that I would love to try, but this is just one that I know my kids, especially Bryce, this is like his favorite that he loves. So this um, cookbook, Nicole, Kira, and I made several years ago now, and it's always linked in my Amazon store, which is in the description box. So this is the recipe. Again, I've shared it. It's on my channel. Also, if you just search banana bread, look up banana bread. Um, but this is my go-to. The kiddos like it. So I've got all my ingredients out here, sugar, flour, oil, uh, chocolate chips is optional. You could just do bananas. You could do nuts. Bryce is not a fan of nuts, but he likes the chocolate chips. So I'm going to throw those in some eggs, baking soda, salt, and then I'm going to use half of these bananas. They're looking real sad now. So I'm going to use, well, not half. This is quite a few bananas. I'm going to use three of these bananas and get that in the oven. And that way we can feed the pets as soon as I'm done whipping this up. All right, I've got my banana bread batter mixed up while I'm making muffins. That's just what the kids prefer, easier for them to grab. And I love silicone cups, they're just easier to get out. And I just use a quarter measuring cup. That seems to be an okay amount for each one. They, they go over a little bit, but not too bad. So I'm just gonna fill my cups here and then I do have, if you guys can see, oh, my oven just beeped, so it is ready for me. Um, I have some more bananas. I, I we, I bought a bunch one week and nobody ate any, so I just plopped them in the freezer because the kids always love any kind of banana baked goodness. So I'm not only going to make banana muffins, but I'm also going to, well, I really haven't decided yet actually. I might put those back in the freezer or I might make, I have this um, recipe saved on my Pinterest. It's called baked oatmeal or banana oatmeal bar, something like that. Um, I might make those next week. Yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, they don't need all this banana. They can just have the muffins. <laughs> so, all right, we've decided that together. So next week, I'm gonna do a meal prep also. So it just keeps me, you know, in check and helps me stay on task by telling myself I'm gonna film it every week during this program. And that way you guys can follow along and get some new recipes if you want going into a new year or we're already into the new year. But anyway, I'm gonna save that recipe for next week. So I'm gonna put those bananas back in the freezer and we're just gonna do these banana muffins for this week. All right, muffins are ready for the oven. I just wanted to share, cause I don't think I have this written in the cookbook or on my channel or anything, but this batch makes about 20 if you use the uh, quarter cup scoop. So these are going into my oven at 350 for about 40 minutes. And in that 40 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and get the animals all fed their dinner. All right, banana muffins have about 10 minutes left. Animals have been fed. Now I am starting on a protein cheesecake that is going to be a dessert option for this week. So um, to my bowl here, I'm going to add in this entire container. It's 32 ounces of the 0% milk fat Greek yogurt. 
I'm also adding in one pack of the Jell-O white chocolate sugar-free pudding mix. One egg. Next up is three tablespoons of Lakanto, the monk fruit sweetener. One tablespoon of vanilla extract. And then two tablespoons of this white chocolate mocha syrup by Jordan Skinny Syrup. And lastly, I just measured out 57 grams of liquid egg whites. All right, and I'm just gonna use my hand mixer to mix everything together. I've got my spring form pan here. I gave it a little spray with some oil. My oven is preheated to 350, and I'm going to get my cheesecake mixture into my pan. I'm gonna spread it out as evenly as I can. All right. Got it spread out and I'm going to bake it for 38 minutes. All right, good thing my kids don't care what like desserts look like or like sweet things because I don't know if it was my bananas were frozen or what, but they these bake differently. <laughs> they like completely filled over. Normally a quarter cup is perfect for these little silicone cups, but next time I use frozen bananas, normally I use them, I wait until like the bananas are brown, I don't put them in the freezer and I make banana muffins, but I don't know what happened this time, but I had a hard time getting them out of the pan. But like I said, at least the kids don't care. They know they taste good. They're still gonna eat them up. But banana muffins are done. And the cheesecake has about 14 minutes left. So I'll be pulling that out when my timer starts beeping. While I wait for the cheesecake to finish, oh, let me grab, uh, I can use this spoon. I already pre-drained all of my cans of tuna. I'm gonna make four different bowls. Well, they're all the same, but four of the same tuna salad for as a lunch option for Mark and I for two days. So I'm going to add one can of tuna to my container here. Like I said, I already kind of drained it the best that I could. And these are five ounce cans. All right, to my tuna, I added in some of the non-fat unflavored Greek yogurt. Then I'm going in with a little Dijon mustard. And then lastly, I've got some dill relish. And that is our tuna salad. So I'm going to just mix this up. And this isn't all we're having. Like as for lunch, we're gonna have like a bag of chess, not, not chess, Quest chips here. This is something that I can easily prep so it's done for the week. All right, for servings of tuna fish ready to go for lunch this week and a cheesecake is done i'm gonna let this cool a little bit and then i'm just gonna put or cover it with some foil and get it in the fridge it's going to chill overnight and i'm actually going to be cutting this up tomorrow it's going to be um, our dessert for dinner tomorrow after dinner tomorrow night but now i'm putting a pause to everything i've got to get a couple things done and then we'll see if i come back tonight and finish off the meal prep, or it might be tomorrow, a whole new day to finish off a last few things. Okay, I am back in the kitchen, but I am only going to prep one more thing and I'll do the rest tomorrow. Just little itty bitty things tomorrow. Um, so I've got my skillet on medium high again, and I have some ground turkey in here. Later on in the week, I'm going to be making some pizza bowls for Mark and I for lunch. And if the, if the kids want them, then I'll have, I definitely have enough turkey for them as well, but I'm gonna go ahead. This is two and a half pounds of turkey, so I'm hoping we like this because I'm just going to throw it on the meal plan for next week as well so we can utilize this turkey, but I'm just making my life easier and pre-cooking the turkey that way when it comes to prepping the bowl, it's just mixing everything together and heating it up. So um, again, with any ground meat that I'm cooking, other than sausage, I feel like sausage has a really good flavor already, but I always add onion and garlic powder. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not measuring. I just kind of put it all over the top and just to give it a little extra, extra flavor, garlic and onion powder go with pretty much any dish. So these are always two yummy options for seasoning. So I'm just going to get this browned up. And like I said, that's just one less thing that I have to worry about later on in the week. It's already done for me. And when we go to have this dish for lunch, I just have to throw the other ingredients in here or with the ground turkey and heat it up and we are good to go. All right, just turned my stove off. Turkey is done. I'm just going to get it in this bowl. And that is one less thing I have to do at the end of the week when I am putting together 
lunches for Mark and I. And like I said, I, I made sure to do plenty in case the kids want to try it as well. But I do have a couple more things on my list that I wanted to get done for this week, but that is okay. I can tackle them tomorrow, but I'll, I'll still include it in this video. So for me, it's going to be tomorrow. For you, it's going to be just in a second or two. So I'm just going to get this turkey in my bowl, get the lid on and get that in the fridge. And then I will be back and share with you guys the rest of my meal prep that I wanted to get done for my family this week. Okay, it is the next day, so I'm gonna finish off my meal prep. It is actually closing in on lunchtime, and one of the items on my list is to make some turkey crescent rolls for the kids. So they're probably gonna have half of them for lunch. I'm gonna go ahead and make this whole pack. There's eight in here, and the other four will just be for another day, maybe tomorrow. They'll just either eat them cold or heat them up in the microwave. They've had them both ways. So I've got my oven preheated to 375. I just always follow, I've made crescent rolls all kinds of ways. I've used ham, I've done like Nutella or Nutella and peanut butter, like a more sweet one, but you can do all sorts of things. Um, but I always just follow the directions. So it's just 375 for 12 minutes. But to my crescent rolls, I did spray my pan and I'm just gonna roll up four at a time because that's all I've got room for here, but I've just got some turkey deli meat and I'm going to, oops, not to, I'm just gonna put a slice. I just kind of fold it in half a little bit and I put it up here at the thicker part. So I'm doing one slice on each. And I mean, I've like I've mentioned, I've done this so many different ways. It just depends on what I have on hand. But I have used sliced cheese before, but I have this, I do have sliced cheese. We're gonna save those for sandwiches. I do have a huge bag of shredded cheese. So I'm just gonna put in, and I just kinda go down. This is gonna be a little messy because I'm using shredded, but I just put a little pinch onto each one. And then all I do is roll it up. Sometimes I'll put some seasoning on it. Um, I'm not going to this time. And once I get all eight in here, I'm going to bake it for 12 minutes. Crescent rolls are in the oven. And I got this big pack of strawberries. I'm gonna go ahead and prep it. I'm gonna cut off these ones. I got the best that I could, but I'm just going to half them, get the tops off and half them. And that way they are prepped for the week. I definitely, the kids eat more produce if it is ready and they don't have to wait on it. So I like to have everything ready to go so they can just go to the fridge, grab what they need, and they don't have to prep anything. So I did rinse these off, but there must have been a little dirt in one of these tops. Let me wipe that off real quick so it doesn't get on the rest of my strawberries. I mean, a little dirt never hurt nobody, but <laughs> just to be on the safe side. Oh, I think I see, I, I think I see one of the strawberries has some dirt on it still in here. So I'll have to clean that one off a little bit more. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these cut up, like I said, so they are ready to just grab out of the fridge and munch on. Okay, container of strawberries washed, cut, ready for snacking on. Okay, other thing I wanted to go ahead and prep is last week for groceries, I think it was last week. I think it's only been a week, I don't remember. But I used Walmart's delivery service and I had green onions in my cart and they gave me green bell peppers instead. I did not have these on the meal plan, didn't end up using them and I'm not going to be using them this week either. So I'm going to go ahead and prep these just so they don't go to waste. And I've got myself a freezer bag right here. So I'm just gonna dice these up and get them in the freezer and that way the next time I do like a soup or casserole, casserole or something that calls for green bell peppers, I will already have them in the freezer and ready to go. So I would normally use a bigger knife when I'm cutting peppers, but I have enough dishes already. Like my dishwasher is full. It's clean because it's a new day, but it's got to be unloaded. And then my sink is already like half full from breakfast today. And you know, the little meal prep that I've already done today. So I'm going to, oh, I wasn't paying attention. I was looking at the camera when I used that to make sure it was in focus and I totally poked a hole through this bell pepper. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get these, like I said, diced up and into my freezer bag just so we're not wasting them. 
Okay, bell peppers chopped, ready to go in the freezer for just a future meal if I need them. And turkey crescent rolls are done. <laughs> Three of them are missing. Bryce already made his plate for lunch and he was like, I'm gonna have three. So I'm gonna get the rest of these into a container. Rose actually had avocado toast with bacon for lunch today. So she's not having any. And then Pearl is having one of the taco salads that I prepped. So everybody is good on lunch. I'm about to grab my taco salad out for lunch as well. So we'll have these five going in tomorrow as a lunch option for the kids. So with that, I did the peppers. The turkey, I put croissants, but it's crescent rolls, whatever. And then the fruit, which was the strawberries, I got those prepped. And like I already mentioned, I am going to move these banana oatmeal, bar, oatmeal bars to next week's meal prep since I already made banana muffins. I feel like that would just be too much and the kids would be eating too much of, of those baked goods. So I crossed everything that I wanted to off my list. Successful meal prep. That is a wrap for meal prep for this week. If you guys like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you would like me to try, no promises, just depends. But with this eight week program that Mark and I are on, we are definitely going to be having um, to meal prep to just set us up for success to make sure we're eating what we're supposed to be eating. So I will be doing some sort of meal prep every week, but if you guys enjoy these, I will try to pull the camera out and share them with you. So other than that, if you are new, I hope you hit that subscribe button. I also hope you're having a fantastic day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.